हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल फिजिक्स विद एन के भट्ट टू लर्न कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फिजिक्स सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन बटन टू गेट नोटिफाइड फॉर एवरी न्यू वीडियो लैक्चर हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज एन के भट्ट वंस अगेन विथ यू विद द न्यू वीडियो लैक्चर सिंस लास्ट कपल ऑफ डेज वी आर गोइंग थ्रू द सीरीज ऑफ वीडियो लैक्चर फॉर एटम्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द रदर फोर्ड एटोमिक मॉडल टूडे आई ब्रोट अनादर इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक इन द सेम सिक्वेंस इट इज रिलेटेड टू बोहर्स एटोमिक मॉडल देर आर टू फेल्यूअर्स ऑफ रदर फोर्ड एटोमिक मॉडल विच दिस मॉडल कुड नॉट एक्सप्लेन द फर्स्ट वन इज द रिवॉल्विंग मोशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन अराउंड द न्यूक्लियस शुड बी एनर्जी रिलेटिंग मोशन एज अ रिजल्ट the mass of electron is converted into energy and finally it should fall into the nucleus after following the spiral path but it does not happen the second aspect this model could not cover is the spectrum of hydrogen atom so to overcome these two drawbacks or you can say failure bohr continued the rutherford model and suggested few more points in addition to rutherford's atomic model he proposed three postulates so bohr's atomic model is in the form of three postulate so let us begin with the first postulate that explains about the revolving motion of electron around the nucleus uh, according to bohr the electrons in an atom could revolve around the nucleus in the non radiating orbits only it means these are the orbits in which if electron is revolving it will not radiate any kind of radiation so the question of spiral motion and finally to fall into the nucleus is answered by bohr in this first postulate so these orbits are called stationary orbit and if electrons are present in these stationary orbits and these are called stationary states of the atom then question arises what is the specification of these orbits that was explained by bohr in the second postulate so just see the text of second postulate it is clear cut mentioned here that an electron revolves around the nucleus only in those orbits for which the angular momentum is some integral multiple of h upon 2 pi so this statement describes the stationary orbit and the criteria of this stationary orbit is the angular momentum so angular momentum would be integral multiple of h upon 2 pi therefore for any individual orbit l is equal to nh upon 2 pi where n can be a number starts from 1 2 3 and so on so l angular momentum is given by mvr also therefore mvr is equal to nh upon 2 pi so in this two postulate bohr explained about the orbits of electron in which an electron can revolve around the nucleus so one unanswered or unexplained part of electron's revolutionary motion is explained by bohr in his two postulates uh, then the third postulate is also very important and that tells us about the emission of radiation so let's see what was covered by bohr in the third postulate in third postulate he explained that if an electron makes transition from higher energy level to lower energy level then always it emits radiation in the form of photon and energy of photon emitted is equal to the energy difference between initial and final states so from higher level to lower level the electron can make transition and as a result of this transition photons are released and energy of photon is equal to difference of the energy of these two energy levels so these are three very important outcomes of bohr's atomic model and this three postulate answers those unanswered or unexplained part of revolutionary motion of electron and the spectrum of hydrogen atom so let's see few more aspects of the motion of electron in the previous video lecture we found the expressions of radius velocity and energy of revolving electron according to rutherford's atomic model and those formula must be modified because bohr suggested one more aspect in addition to those 
and that is related to angular momentum of the electron. So, we will combine both. Uh, let us begin with the uh, Bohr's atomic model, then we will have m v r is equal to n h upon 2 pi. Likewise, according to Rutherford's atomic model, we have m v square upon r is equal to k z e square upon r square. Power of r can be cancelled. So, m v square is equal to k z e square upon r. If you replace for v from the first Bohr's atomic model, then m into n square h square upon 4 pi epsilon square m square r square is equal to z e square upon 4 pi epsilon node r. If we simplify, we will get r is equal to n square h square epsilon node upon pi m e square z. For hydrogen atom z is equal to 1, therefore r is equal to n square h square epsilon node upon pi m e square, where n can be 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, this is the formula for orbital radius of the revolving electron. If we modify the suggestions given by Bohr atomic model. Let us see once again about these few steps m v r is equal to n h upon 2 pi this is according to Bohr's atomic model here m v r is angular momentum. According to Rutherford's atomic model the centripetal force m v square upon r is equal to electrostatic force. If we simplify this the power of r is cancelled. So, we get m v square is equal to k z e square upon r. We can replace for v from the first equation. So, v is equal to n h upon 2 pi upon m r. So, square of this would be n square h square upon 4 pi square m square r square. So, this is the left hand side is equal to z e square upon 4 pi of z n node r we have replaced for k and k is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. So, n square h square upon pi m r here also the power of r is cancelled 4 pi 4 pi is cancelled. So, left one is pi m is also cancelled with the power of m. So, we get n square h square upon pi m r is equal to z e square upon epsilon naught. Then finally, r is equal to n square h square epsilon naught upon pi m e square z. For hydrogen atom z is equal to 1, therefore, r is equal to n square h square epsilon naught upon pi m e square. This is the orbital radius of the revolving electron. We can replace for n from 1 onwards accordingly we will get the radius of higher orbits also. So, let us see what would be the radius of innermost orbit for innermost orbit n is equal to 1 therefore, r is equal to n h square epsilon naught upon pi m e square this is also known as Bohr radius. Now, we have to find velocity. So, velocity is v is equal to under root k z e square upon m r we can replace for r. So, z e square upon 4 pi epsilon node m n square h square epsilon node upon pi m e square. So, v is equal to z e 4 upon 4 epsilon node n square h square. For hydrogen atom z is equal to 1 then v is equal to under root e power 4 upon 4 epsilon node square n square h square. So, v is equal to e square upon twice epsilon node n h this is orbital velocity of revolving electron and just go through the steps once again. So, that you can understand in better way this is the innermost orbit radius of electron in hydrogen atom and this radius is known as Bohr radius. The formula for velocity from Rutherford's atomic model is v is equal to under root k z e square upon m r if you replace for radius then the radius formula is n square h square epsilon node upon pi m e square and rest of the terms are as it is we have replaced for k also k is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon node z e square as it is m as it is and replace for r also. If you simplify this then m is cancelled pi is also cancelled. So, in numerator we get 
z into e power 4 e square into e square is e power 4 and in denominator we have 4 epsilon naught square n square h square. For hydrogen atom z is equal to 1 then we get v is equal to under root e power 4 upon 4 epsilon naught square n square h square. If we take root of this term then v is equal to e square upon twice epsilon naught n h. This is the formula for orbital velocity there we can replace for n is equal to 1 to 3 and so on. So, we found the expression for radius and velocity as well. Now, it is turn for the expression for energy. Energy of the orbiting electron is given by E is equal to minus half k z e square upon r but r is equal to n square h square epsilon naught upon pi m e square therefore e is equal to minus half z e square upon 4 by epsilon naught n square h square epsilon naught upon pi m e square. If you simplify this we get e is equal to minus z m e 4 upon 8 epsilon naught n square h square. For hydrogen term z is equal to 1 so, E is equal to minus m e 4 upon 8 epsilon naught square n square h square except n all other quantities are constant here. Therefore, E is equal to if you replace for the quantities and we get minus 2.18 into 10 power minus 18 joule upon n square to convert this into electron volt we have to divide by 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 and after simplifying mathematically we get E is equal to minus 13.6 upon n square. So, this is the formula for energy if we combine rather Ford atomic model and Bohr atomic model. Here also we can replace for n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and other higher numbers. So, we will just see the energies of certain lower levels in this last part of this video lecture for innermost orbit n is equals to 1 therefore e is equal to minus 13.6 upon 1. So, it is minus 13.6 electron volt it is the energy of ground state. For n is equal to 2 we will get minus 13.6 upon 2 square is 4 if we simplify we get minus 3.4 electron volt it is the energy of first excited state. For n is equal to 3 we get e is equal to minus 13.6 upon 3 square is 9 if we divide we get minus 1.5 electron volt it is the energy of second excited state. For n is equal to 4 we get E is equal to minus 13.6 upon 4 is square is 16 and if we simplify we get minus 0 0.85 electron volt. This is the energy of third excited state. As we move towards the higher energy level you can see very clear cut from this data that energy increases. It means, if you are uh, starting from ground level and moving towards 1 to 3 and so on excited state you can see very easily that energy is increasing. So, in this video lecture we discussed about Bohr atomic model and modifications for the revolving electron in the formula of radius, velocity and energy of the orbiting electron. So, I hope you, this video will help you to understand the concept of Bohr's atomic model. We will meet very soon in the next video lecture. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Mm -hmm.